Hey guys, welcome back. So a few months ago, back in March, I was invited to speak at the State of the Schools Address, and I'm sure you guys have heard of the State of the Union Address, when the president goes on stage and they just kind of lay out their plan for America. It's kind of similar, but um, on a smaller scale with the superintendent just kind of saying his remarks for the school district. And so I was invited to speak at this event, and um, I have a lot to say about it, but here's the footage. Good evening, my name is Emmanuel Berriesa, and I stand before you guys today because I have accomplished a few things so far. I graduated high school last year one year early as a class valedictorian. I earned a full ride to an Ivy League institution with graduating with over $80,000 in outside scholarships. <laughs> When I was 15, I founded a nonprofit organization, and last year I had the honor of being invited to the White House. And I come here today not to boast about my achievements or to talk about what I have or have not done, but I am here to say that as a community, we have so much to do. There's so much left to work, and there's still a lot of work that we need to do to improve our students. My parents came to this country undocumented 20 years ago to live, to provide a better life for me and my seven siblings. I'm the second youngest of eight children. And um, my freshman year of high school, my father lost his job and he found a work in the state of California in San Diego. And he didn't live with us for about a year. Around that same time, my mother worked three jobs. <laughs> and she would take the bus. We live in Eastside. She would take the two hours to go across town just to work, you know, clean houses. And it was during this time that it was just a really difficult time. But every push that I gave, every obstacle that I faced, it wasn't me alone giving these pushes. It was my teachers, my communities, the peoples in my schools, the resources that I had available to me. Teachers such as Ms. Vado, my AP psychology teacher, who took that chance with me to speak with me after school, to talk through the things that I was going to. My AP history teacher, Amy Colasuno, who just signed up for everything and just supported everything I did. My bio teacher, Pirtle, who gave me a love for science when I previously had and I wanted nothing to do with biology. And, um, it's these, it's these resources that have really helped me to strive forward because I believe a lot of the times we, as a community, I mean, higher graduation rates and lower classes and more AP tests are great, but sometimes all a student truly needs is someone in their corner, someone who's really vouching for them and telling them that they can do it because at that moment, I didn't think I'd be able to do this, you know? And it's not because of my own strength, because of my own intelligence, because of my own ambitions. It's because of the people who were with me all along the way. And I think as a community, we really need to step it up, you know, get to know our kids. And I call out to every educator, every administrator, every legislator, every principal, anyone who's in a position to do so, really get to know your students, get to know who you stand in front of in the classroom every single morning, because those are the kids you are teaching. And as a school district, we shouldn't just strive to graduate our students. We should strive to mold them into the leaders that this country desperately needs. And so, And so to the superintendent and the board of trustees and everyone who's been involved with the Clark County School District, thank you so much for the work that we've been able to accomplish, but there's still so much more to go. When I see this photo, I don't want just one student out of CSD. I don't want to be the exception. I want this to be the norm for every student out there who has a dream. Thank you. All right, so behind that curtain, when I went back, stage there was the board of directors and the superintendent a whole bunch of news people everyone just kept coming up to me but to be really honest with you guys at that moment and throughout that whole, like as soon as i was done giving my speech i just wanted to throw up i didn't want to show you guys this footage i took it on my iphone because it's kind of really embarrassing but i'll show you guys anyways so i'm backstage i just got done giving my speech for the state of the school address and i feel relieved i feel like it went well um I'll show you guys the video, but um, I, I don't think like the nervousness um, left like yet because uh, look, uh, well, I was like in the bathroom here and I just like, oh, I'm not gonna show you, but how do I, I just threw up. Um, yeah, so I just threw up. I um. Is really tough so i had a few days to kind of really prepare but at the same time i had nothing prepared i didn't have anything written because i i feel like if i have something written and i have to memorize it and if i forget a word it's just going to throw everything else off track so i thought you know what just speak just speak from your heart speak from your mind and just kind of 
go with the flow of whatever's whatever my head wants to say at that moment but I didn't know how big this event was until I got there. So I was scheduled to speak at 9.30. I got there at 9 and I talked to the to the PR lady, the one who reached out to me. And I said, by the way, like who is out there? Who is my audience? Because based off of who my audience is, I kind of change a few things up. Like I say, if words differently or I talk about a different set of experiences. And when she told me that there were state legislators, uh, a lot of news outlets, just really important people principles and such like to me that was just not what i expected at all that half an hour before i went on stage i was just really freaking out and my heart started racing like i was out of breath and i had to go alone because my family is busy and everyone was working so i, I had taken an uber no actually my friend let me borrow his car shout out to my boy israel so i just dropped off my friend israel at school because he's letting me borrow the car so I could go give my speeches today, um, it's pretty early. And so um, I was just really freaking out because I wasn't sure what I could possibly say, you know. Here I have this platform to speak to, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands or how many people watch that, that speech. And I was just really, I really wanted to make sure that what I said was meaningful and it was impactful and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to accomplish that. It was just a lot of thoughts racing through my mind and I didn't have anything prepared beforehand and I really didn't want to mess this up. And my biggest fear was just passing out on stage or losing my words or I don't know, I just really did not want to make an embarrassment of myself. And not only that, but I had a three minute time limit is what they told me. They said, try to keep it in three minutes. And I just had so much I wanted to say, I didn't know how I could possibly fit everything in three minutes. I was just dealing with a lot of stuff at that moment in time as well. As I kind of mentioned in my previous video of the challenges of being a first generation low income student, um, there was just a lot going on with my family and just me personally, a lot of thoughts in my head. And so the night before, I also had like a complete mental breakdown and not, not because of the speech, the speech was not even on my radar, just a whole bunch of other things that I felt during that time, a lot of pressures in my life and I, if you guys want like I could make a whole video about that some other day but the night before I was just completely discouraged and just really worn out and I knowing that I had this speech the next day was just a daunting thing for me because I was like yo I can't even <laughs> I don't even know how to deal with myself at this moment how am I gonna give a speech to apparently important people the next day Obviously, I was in the bathroom. I was really freaking out and what helped me calm down a lot was just praying And even if some of you guys watching aren't religious or anything for me It's just recognizing that there's a higher being there's that That what I do in this world is beyond myself And so I pray to God just for calmness and for peace and for serenity and everything just kind of became it became super clear, you know, this is exactly what I need to talk about. This is what I feel is most important. And I just kind of gave myself a mental bullet list in my head of the things I wanted to say. And I just stopped at that. And I probably had about 10 minutes before I went on stage. And those were 10 really peaceful minutes because mind you, before I had prayed, I had been worried about passing out on stage and all these other scary thoughts and I had that I've been super worried about. And all those thoughts just kind of left and then I delivered this speech which happened to turn out way better than I had expected and I don't know I just I felt it was really important to talk about this experience because a lot of the times people see artists and famous people or politicians or just any influencer really you see them on camera and you might think to yourself wow how eloquent was that how professional how amazing that person is but a lot of the times like I said you don't see what's backstage. You don't see the throw up. You don't see the inner thoughts You don't see the day before or the day after and so I think through this video and I guess all my other videos moving forward I just kind of want to Remove the curtain and just be really honest and really genuine with you guys about How it is that I go about my life and all the crazy things that's been happening to me lately Once again, thank you guys for watching on um, like leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time.